All right, I guess uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. So first of all, welcome and, and thank you for coming. Uh, my name's Mike Kay. I'm the Market Development Manager for Expo. And what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today is a, a couple of different techniques that we have available, a couple of different technologies for low heat UV curing uh, for both medical and optoelectronic uh, applications. First, I'd just like to give you a little bit of a, a background uh, into Omnicure. We've been manufacturing UV spot curing systems for nearly 30 years now. We have about 15,000 units out in the field, 70 different countries. And today I'm going to talk about the two different technologies that we do have, and that's lamp and LED technology. So we have UV curing systems that use uh, mercury lamps. We also have UV systems using LED. And that's what uh, we're going to talk a little bit about today, look at some of the pros and cons of, of each of those types of systems. One of the things we do like to promote with all of our curing systems is the idea of control and the importance of being able to control your process. And that's the only way that you're going to get a repeatable assembly process is if you can control the output of your system uh, and the different factors that really are going to affect the, uh, the cured properties of your adhesive. One of the technologies we have is called closed loop feedback. And what that does is that allows you to maintain a very repeatable irradiance level uh, every time you expose a part. So it really helps to ensure that you have a very repeatable curing process. Some of the applications that our systems are used on uh, within medical, different types of catheter application, balloon catheters, uh, ablation catheters, also things like syringes, anesthesia masks, uh, very common applications for our UV systems. Uh, and also in optoelectronics, things like cell phones uh, for the display, for the cameras, uh, for the micro speakers, uh, all applications that use UV spot curing systems. Uh, and also things like your digital cameras, uh, DVD players, Blu-ray players, and hard drives as well. So quick, give you a, a bit of a, a background into the different systems that we do offer. The Omnicure 2000 is our lamp system. It uses a 200-watt lamp. But what we have on the lamp is we have a special dichroic uh, filter on the lamp. And what that does is that minimizes the amount of infrared energy that makes its way to the parts. And again, that is specific for minimizing the heat that's going to get to your parts. Uh, a lot of these applications where you're joining plastics, where you're joining sensitive components, uh, it's very important to try to minimize the heat. So the dichroic uh, reflector on the lamp does that. We also actually offer uh, some filter uh, options as well, five different filter options that again allows you to reduce the heat within your assembly process. The system allows you to adjust the intensity in 1% increments, so you can really select the optimum irradiance level for your process. And then, as I mentioned, the closed-loop feedback uh, is there to automatically maintain that level. One of the things that uh, we'll go over is that the output of a lamp is going to degrade over time. So what you have to ensure is that as the output degrades, the, the output for each of your uh, assembly parts is maintained. And that's what the closed-loop feedback does. Uh, these systems are also very automation friendly. So whether you're in a manual or a fully automated process, uh, very easy to get the system set up. The other uh, technology you have is LED technology. Uh, the LX400 system utilizes uh, LEDs, which have a lifetime well over 20,000 hours. Uh, you can get a peak irradiance of about 9.5 watts per centimeter squared from each head. The system will control up to four different heads, and these can be controlled independently, so you can set different time, different irradiance levels for each head. The heads are available in 365 nanometers, 385 nanometers, and 400 nanometers. And this is really important um, for matching the wavelength of the light source with the adhesive. And we're going to talk a little bit uh, more about that in the coming slides. The other thing with the LED systems is they use special lenses on each of the heads. And these lenses are used to really maximize the output from the head based upon the working distance that you have and also the spot size that you require. So you can really select the most appropriate lens for your application. Another type of LED system that we have is a, an LED light line. So now, instead of a small spot of light, you actually end up with a, about a three inch wide line of light. Again, 20,000 hours lifetime. Uh, it's available in 365 nanometers, 400 nanometers. What this does is now it allows you to start moving into uh, a process where instead of the parts being static and curing each one individually, you can start moving the parts underneath the LED head. 
and can really help to improve the throughput of your process. So as I talked about, what I think what I wanted to get into today is really trying to compare these two different uh, technologies, LAMP and LED, and try to go over some of the, the benefits and limitations of each, and maybe hopefully if, if there's something you're looking at, give you some information on which technology may be best for your application. So the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at some, some features within the systems that aren't really directly related to the curing of the adhesive, but still very important considerations when you're choosing uh, a system. The first thing we're going to talk about is lifetime of the lamp. So as we mentioned, the lifetime of a typical mercury lamp uh, is about 3,000 hours. You'll see here that, that at 3,000 hours, the output of the lamp is about 40 to 50% lower than what you originally started. Uh, again, that's the importance of the closed loop feedback to maintain that repeatable output as the lamp degrades over time. If we look at an LED system, you can see the LED system is going to go to about 20,000 hours, so significantly longer. What that's going to do is really lower the cost of operation for your process. No longer are you going to be replacing a lamp every 3,000 hours. One thing I, I would like to point out with the curve, though, is that what you will see is there is degradation in the LEDs over time. Now, again, spread out over 20,000 hours, it's much more gradual than a lamp. But you'll see, again, if the LED starts out at 100%, by 20,000 hours, it's down to about under 50% output. So it still does degrade over time, just much slower than you would see on a lamp system. So if we're going to compare these two, you 3,000 hours for a lamp, 20,000 hours for an LED, we would definitely give that benefit to the LED system as far as lifetime goes. If we look at environmental factors, and this is more and more becoming a consideration, a green technology that people are looking to, to take into their process. Uh, UV curing in general can be considered uh, somewhat of a green technology because of the UV adhesives. They're very low in solvents uh, in volatile organic compounds versus a lot of the other adhesives. So it's inherently thought of as a green technology, so it's definitely a consideration when you're looking at the system to use. So if we're comparing lamp versus LED, the lamp systems, generally you're using a mercury-filled lamp versus an LED where there is no mercury involved. So again, we're going to give the advantage uh, to the LED system from an environmental point of view. And finally, when we look at power, and when I talk about power, this is the electrical power required to actually run the system. If we compare essentially equivalent LED versus lamp systems, the LED uses about 80% lower electrical power than the lamp system. It's pretty significant for one system, but when you're in an environment with 50 or 100 systems, it can be a really significant advantage uh, for an LED system and definitely a consideration when choosing systems. So we're going to give that one to LED as well. Next, I'd like to actually get into some of the, the factors that the curing system controls that are, are going to affect the cured properties of your adhesive. And these are the things like the time that you're curing for, the irradiance level, the spectral content of the light, and finally the heat. Heat is generally a, a byproduct of the chemical reaction, but it is something that can be controlled depending upon how you control the other factors from your curing system. It can be very important depending upon your parts. If you're using plastics uh, or heat-sensitive parts, again, it's going to be a very important consideration. The other thing to keep in mind is that the importance of controlling these factors and maintaining them very repeatable, we have seen a number of times where by changing just one, you can actually change the physical properties of the cured adhesive. So the same adhesive could have different bond strength depending upon, for example, the irradiance level that you use to cure. So it's important to set your process and then maintain that process over time. So if we look at something like, if we look at the peak irradiance between a lamp and the LED system. A lamp system, you can get about 30 watts per square centimeter. The LED system, as I mentioned, maxes out right now at about 8 to 9 watts per square centimeter. So there we go. This one we're going to give to the lamp system. Certainly much more output gives you a bit more flexibility on what you can do with the system. The other consideration is spot size. With a lamp system, what you're doing is you're connecting a light guide up to the lamp. Uh, typically, the light guides will be anywhere from 3 millimeters to 8 millimeters in diameter. So you can comfortably cure anywhere from 3 to, to 10 or 12 millimeter spots with a lamp system. The LED systems, as I mentioned, you use specific lenses, and what they do is they focus that LED energy into very small spot sizes in order to get that high peak irradiance. So really, anything outside of about four millimeter spot sizes, you're starting to get outside the, the comfort zone of an LED system. So you're a bit more limited in what you actually can do with an LED system. So in this case, 
we're again, we're going to give that one to the LAMP systems. You've got a bit more flexibility with the larger spot size. And the final thing we're going to look at is the spectrum of the, of the systems. And it's a very, very different spectrum between a mercury LAMP system and an LED. The LAMP system is a very broad spectrum. You get uh, energy between about 250 to 600 nanometers. You get various peaks in the output. The LED, on the other hand, is very narrow, generally about 10 to 15 nanometers wide. Uh, our system is available three different wavelengths, so centered at 365, 385, and 400 nanometers. So if we compare those two, which one would we give the advantage to? Actually, in this case, it's a tie. There's really some advantages and limitations to both a broad and a narrow spectrum. And that's something we're going to look at a bit further. So here's just a chart showing you a comparison between a lamp system and a 365 nanometer LED. You can see the lamp. It's got much larger peaks. Uh, it's got three separate ones, 365, uh, 405, and about 440 nanometers versus the LED centered at 365 nanometers. And so what, are, what is that going to drive within your process? What, are, what is the importance of the different spectrum? The two really most important points to keep in mind is the heat that you're going to see on your parts, and also probably even more important is the compatibility of the light source with the adhesive that you're using. If your light source and your adhesive aren't compatible, you're not going to get any curing, and, you, and obviously your, your process isn't going to work. So when we look at curing, the, the curing reaction requires sufficient light of the correct wavelength received by the photo initiator in order for the reaction to start. So this can be very critical for an LED system where you have a very narrow bandwidth of light. So it's really important that you match the bandwidth of light from your LED with the absorption spectrum of the adhesive's photo initiator. Now with the broadband light source, uh, like a LAMP system, where you have a much wider range of light, it's much easier to do. The limitation, though, of the broadband spectrum is that light beyond what is used by the photo initiator will be absorbed by the adhesive and can be converted into heat. Light from the, can also be absorbed by your parts and, again, converted into heat. Now, as I mentioned, the lamp sources do have filters available that will allow you to reduce the spectral content of the light and, again, helping you to minimize the heat. But in this case, the LEDs are much more effective at minimizing the heat within your process and minimizing the heat to your parts. But, as I mentioned, critical that you match the wavelength of your LED to the wavelength required by your adhesive. Now, this can be a little bit trickier than you might think, and I'll give you an example here where we were curing uh, a customer's parts. The adhesive they were using specified 365 nanometer wavelength light. The two parts they were joining were plastic parts. Uh, one was a clear polycarbonate part. We had to shine the light through the clear plastic in order to reach the adhesive. So one of the tests we did was to check the transmission of that plastic part. And if you look at the curve to the right there, what you'll see is that at 365 nanometers, where the adhesive has peak absorption, the plastic transmitted about half of the light, about 50% of the light. 50% of it got absorbed by the plastic itself, never made it to the adhesive. As we moved up into the spectrum up to 400 nanometers, we started to get to about 80% transmission. So now only 20% of the light is getting stuck in the plastic parts. So you get about 60% more light to your part. So when we actually tested the adhesive with both 400 and 365 nanometer, what we found is, although the adhesive did cure at 365 nanometers, we were actually able to cure it faster and with less heat when we used 400 nanometer uh, LED. So unfortunately, sometimes the information within the spec sheet is not enough information for you to use to maximize your process. In this case, if you had just used 365, you probably wouldn't have had as efficient a process as using 400 nanometers. So again, which wavelength to choose when you're doing it? Most adhesives, what we have seen from many of the adhesives that are out there, they will specify light at 365 nanometers. There's the historical relationship between the adhesives and the mercury lamps. The mercury lamps have a very significant peak at 365. A lot of the adhesives designed to match up to that specific wavelength. A lot of adhesives, though, will actually have multiple photo initiators. And these photo initiators can be set up to match different uh, peak wavelengths. You, if you remember in the lamp, you have peaks at 365, 405, 440. So many photo initiators may be set to have peak absorption at different wavelengths. And again, to take advantage of the broad spectrum 
of the mercury lamps. So the question becomes, you take an adhesive that was designed to be cured by a broad spectral light source and start curing it with a very narrow band LED light source, and are you going to get the same physical properties in your adhesive with the LED as you would with the, the lamp? And the answer to that is you need to test. You need to test and see what you get. It's, there's no easy answer to that, but it's definitely an important consideration when looking at the various technologies. So if we go back to our chart here and we look at the different uh, benefits and limitations, so we look at heat. Well, the lamp systems are actually pretty good at minimizing the heat in the curing process. You have things like the dichroic reflector, minimizes the IR, you have filters available, but not as good as the LED. The narrow wavelength of the LED is, the, is, is much better at minimizing heat to your parts. So if that's a big consideration, again, that might be something you would look towards an LED system. But adhesive compatibility. Most of the adhesives have been designed to work with broad spectrum. Uh, with the broad spectrum, you're going to have a much better chance of matching up to the absorption spectrum of the adhesive. Uh, and although LEDs uh, are able to cure a significant number of adhesives, and there are more and more LED-specific adhesives uh, being made, you still don't get that same compatibility that you would with a lamp. So in this case, we would give the advantage here to the, the lamp system as far as it, adhesive compatibility. So if we look at our chart and we see we got stars on both sides and we say, okay, for my process, which one's the best? And so if we look at that, the winner and clearly the best one for your process is, unfortunately, there's, there's no easy answer to that. Uh, the only way to really find out the technology that's going to work best for you is to do the tests with the system that you're going to use, with the adhesives and with your parts. It's really the only way to reliably tell which technology is going to be best for you. So we have both systems available. Um, we're at booth 1207. Please come give us a, a visit. And uh, at this point, if you have any questions, I'd uh, be happy to try to answer them.